Hey, what's up? This is Daddy T again with yet another video. And today we're going to be going over an easy way for foreigners and Japanese alike to order food online directly to their house. Now, there are a few services out there, but today let's just focus on one that myself and my family uses regularly. It's called Damai Kan. Damai means delivery, and kan, well, in kanji, kan is uh, equivalent to an old style Western mansion. At least that's what the kanji says anyway, but you can just think of it as yeah, they can deliver to my house if you set it up properly. So, I am currently using an iPhone with iOS version 14 on it, but that shouldn't matter. You should be able to use the service from a PC as well. The address is seen above. Since I am using an iPhone, I am using the Google search app from the App Store. You can type the URL in the search, and this will give you an option to translate it to English. When using a PC, use the Google Chrome app, and it will either ask you if you want it translated into English automatically, or you can translate it manually, and I will show you where later. It's also worth noting that I have the Google Translator app on my phone. The Google Translator app will come in handy later, and I'll show you why. To get started, after you're done drooling over all the food, you will want to put the site in English. Hit the three stripes icon at the top left of the screen. Scroll all the way down to the Google icon and select language and choose English. So secondly, you want to hit the sign up button so you can register and get in the system. So after the translator is done translating the page, a new member registration page should pop up. On it, you will see three options, postal code, prefecture, and map. Now I think the fastest way to get through this is to insert your postal code because it will immediately bring up your area. If you're not sure what your postal code is, check one of your utility bills and it should be on there. In Japan, the postal code is always three numbers followed by a dash or hyphen, then four numbers. But for this site, you don't actually have to put the dash in. Let's take area code 2390822 for example. After I enter in my postal code, a list of chomes will pop up. A chome is basically an area inside of a district. Say for instance, you see Uraga, you have Ichi Chome, Ni Chome, San Chome, Yon Chome, and Go Chome. You will know what your chome is because it is the first number of your house. So say your address was five, hyphen three hyphen 42 sounds crazy but the first number is your chome so you would select go chome if that was your address in Naraga. a second option would be to choose prefectures you will undoubtedly know what prefecture you're in after living there for only a few months but after choosing your prefecture in a drop down menu you would have to have some type of understanding of the japanese alphabet or as they say Akasatana Hamayala wa un. Just to find the city in your prefecture, which is why I suggest using the postal code method. So after choosing your correct chome, you'll be taken to a new page that automatically translates. Enter in your email address, create a standard password. Underneath those entry fields, you'll see a first set of fields that are translated as surname and name. Now this is where you will need Google Translator app. These two fields will only accept kanji or katakana characters. If you are a foreigner, you'll most likely not have a kanji for your name. And so you will have to type your name into the translator, copy and paste your last name in the first box and first name in the second box. Next, for some odd reason, the next box are translated as because and may, but don't worry about it. These fields also want your first and last name, but this time in hiragana characters. You do this easily by selecting the Romanji keyboard on your phone and typing your name in the fields as best as you can. 
Now, if you're doing this part on a PC, you can just Google English to Romaji Translator and type in your name. They have sites like Romaji Desu and other sites like that where you can just type in your name and convert it into Romaji. You can copy and paste. Next, enter your home address. You don't have to put in your postal code because you've already entered it. Simply put in a physical address of your residence. For example, 5-32-40 Urago will suffice. This is very important for two reasons. One, so that the delivery man can find you without having to call you. And two, so that you will get an accurate listing of food available for delivery to your residence. Lastly, specify the apartment number if it applies to you. If not, leave empty. As you can see in the address field, I put the town of Uraga in Hiragana just in case, using that Romaji converter again. After that, enter your phone number, gender, and date of birth. You can also put in a nickname, but I recommend putting that also in Hiragana characters with that Romaji converter just in case. Agree to the terms to finalize your account. One of the things I like about this site is that you don't necessarily have to have a Japanese bank account to place an order. For example, when it's translated, you'll see that you have multiple options like PayPay, which is basically the Japanese version of PayPal. You have a credit card option and an Amazon Pay option, a Line Pay option if you use the Line app. But specifically, let's talk about the Amazon Pay option. If you have an Amazon Japan account, and it is linked to your Western debit or credit card, then when you choose that option to check out, it will charge that card. So Amazon will act as a proxy to charge your card for you so that you don't have to have a Japanese bank account. That's one of the reasons why I like this site. You can use Amazon Pay and you'll be just fine. This site is pretty neat and you can specify whether or not you want the delivery man to wait around after delivering your food because of COVID. It's actually called the COVID option and they will ring the doorbell and leave the food there and try to stay far away and check just to see if you open the door. Afterwards, they drive off into the sunset. I recommend this site and I hope you find something tasty on here. Now, me and my family, we usually order from a Taiwanese spot and I get this really, really, really fiery Taiwanese ramen and I love it. Now, if this was helpful to you, please like and subscribe or share the knowledge. I'll be posting more videos weekly. And until next time, love each other and stay safe out there. Daddy T out.